Howdy folks and welcome back to Armored Warfare with the Mighty Jingles. Today we're going to learn how to not suck at Operation Starry Night. Operation Starry Night takes over from where Operation Ghost Hunter left off. At the start of the mission, your team are all clustered around the town square that you had to defend from the enemy forces at the end of Operation Ghost Hunter. In this first example, I'm going to be in the Chintaro 120 wheeled tank destroyer. It's an Italian machine and it's very, very, very good. It's way better than the LAV-600. Unfortunately, if you want to get to the M1182 mobile gun system, you have to go through the LAV-600. Although, to be fair to the LAV-600, it's not as bad as it used to be. In fact, fully upgraded, it's actually pretty good. Stock, however, it's still pretty terrible. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm in a wheeled tank destroyer. I really don't want to be brawling it out with light tanks and main battle tanks in the middle of a town, but I don't really have an awful lot of choice here because the enemy vehicles are on you so incredibly quickly. Generally speaking, if I'm in a wheeled tank destroyer at the beginning of Operation Story Night, the first thing I try to do is get the hell out of the town. And I go for the secondaries. However, we've got two armoured fighting vehicles on the team here, and one of them at least, the Weasel, is definitely switched on. He knows what he's doing, he's already managed to get out of the town and he's going after those secondaries and he's knocking them down one after the other. Our two main battle tanks are keeping these guys engaged so while I couldn't get out of the town initially I can at least put this very very good 100... no that's not good. <laughs> ah stop shooting at me. Uh, I really don't want to have to use the smoke discharger this early on in the match so instead I'm just gonna get the hell out of here. Oh hello, a T90. And I've got his rear. Oh, no, I'm going to have to deal with this light tank first. There's one. I'm going to take a couple. Oh, you see me back off. Oh, no, I've killed him. That's all right. You'll know that the weasel has already nailed all three of the secondary objectives. It's the best possible thing you can do at the beginning of Operation Starry Night if you're in an armoured fighting vehicle. Not only that, He's also already made it across the river. This is the key to make an Operation Starry Night as easy as you possibly can for yourself. Can I shoot this guy through the building? I, I can. Bingo. Gotcha. Just one left. That we know about. You'll note that the weasel has also spotted the enemy artillery. And as soon as he reloads, he's probably going to take him out. Having a good armoured fighting vehicle on your team for Operation Starry Night, like that guy in the Weasel, makes your life so much easier. But you don't have to be in an armoured fighting vehicle to do what that guy is doing. And I'll show you what I'm talking about later. But for now, that Weasel AWC is the superstar of the team in this match. We've also got another armoured fighting vehicle. You can see him up there in the top northeast corner of the map, the BMP-3M, who was about as much use to the team as tits on a fish. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, that's not really fair, Jingles. There are some enemy vehicles that spawn from the northern end of the map, and yep, the BMP-3M is just about to spot one of them. But the second objective in the middle of the field up to the north is not the critical objective on this mission. It's the third objective. And that is up where the weasel is. Not only that, the weasel is also in the position to spot all of these enemy tanks and enable me to get flanking shots on them, as they rush to the second objective. So the weasel is actually doing a better job spotting for the team by heading away from the second objective and lining up all the tanks that are making their way to it rather than sitting overlooking the second objective in the same way that the BMP-3M is. Because that weasel's in the position that he is, we're able to take shots at these guys before they cross the bridge and while they're crossing the bridge, when they're in the open, when we can take shots into their flank. If you don't get somebody over that river, you end up having to take shots like this at targets that are already in the cap circle and they're already in the low ground and they're harder targets to hit. Thanks to the weasel, we can light these guys up while they're still in the open. And with shots like this, well, <laughs> you just can't miss. Obviously, since I'm playing the Chintaro 120 here, it's a wheel tank destroyer with a really, really good gun but absolutely terrible armour. Um, I'm doubly appreciative of the weasel for doing what he did in this particular mission. I'm just racking up the damage here at no risk to myself whatsoever. Well out of view range of all of these enemy vehicles. And it's all down to the position that the weasel chose. 
Well, okay, but what if the matchmaker doesn't put any armoured fighting vehicles in your team? It doesn't matter. You don't have to be in an armoured fighting vehicle to cross a river. Anybody can do it. In fact, I'm going to show you an example. Well, I'm going to show you two examples of what happens in this map when nobody crosses the river, and what happens when you don't have an armoured fighting vehicle on your team, or the armoured fighting vehicles in your team, like the BMP-3M there, who's still camping the northeastern corner of the map, and a main battle tank has to take it upon themselves to do the job of the scouts. Anybody can do it. It's not special. All you're doing is crossing a river and getting yourself into a spotting position. In fact, main battle tanks can do it very, very well because you're not just spotting from concealment. In a main battle tank, you can park yourself in the middle of the road and basically act as a roadblock with a gun. For now, though, I don't need to take any risks, and that weasel is still lighting up target after target after target for me to shoot at. This, the third objective in the farmhouses up there, this is where it becomes critical because if you leave it until now to get over that river there are enemy vehicles crossing towards that third objective from the north and the south and no matter which way you turn your tank you're going to get caught in a crossfire and it's at this point right here where people fail operation starry night over and over and over put yourself in the position of the leopard 2 and the t-72a who have only just crossed the bridge and are now moving up to the third objective farmhouses over there have it, see the weasel he's already scouting around and he's gonna pop up and spot even more of these guys now we've already killed a couple of these enemy main battle tanks thanks to the weasel spotting them I was able to get flanking shots into them and, and murder them as they came across because of that there's only one enemy vehicle in the cap at the moment that BMPT Terminator now you notice the T-72A popped up to try to spot him and take shots at him and he took a fair amount of damage doing it. The damage that that T-72A took was from all of these guys approaching from the southern road. He can point the front of his tank towards whoever's in the cap circle, in this case it's a BMPT Terminator. The BMPT Terminator only made it into the cap circle in the first place because he approached from the north and we've taken him out with relatively minor damage sustained. None of these vehicles approaching from the south had even made it as far as the cap circle. If the weasel hadn't been in a position to spot them for me, and I wasn't in a position to put flanking fire into them from here, there wouldn't have just been a BMPT Terminator in the cap circle at this point. There would have been half a dozen main battle tanks as well. And so that Leopard 2 and T-72A wouldn't have just been dealing with one BMPT. They would have been trying to get up into the cap circle, deal with half a dozen tanks in there while getting shot up in the rear, from all of these guys, wait for it, any second now, Weasel's going to pop up, and there they are. This is why it is so critical that you get somebody in at the position that that Weasel is occupying as soon as possible in Operation Starry Night. And this is the point at which so many teams fail this mission over and over and over. And the trick is really simple, just get somebody over the river. An armoured fighting vehicle, if you've got one, and they can be bothered, but anybody can do it. Main battle tanks are actually pretty good at it, as I'm going to show you in another example. But for now, let's take a look at what a nightmare this map can be if nobody manages to get over that river. This time around, I'm in the Ariete, the Italian main battle tank. It's a very, very good machine. It's got an excellent gun. Uh, with very good shaped charge ammunition. I think it has something like 410 millimeters of penetration, which is really good for high explosive anti-tank ammo. Now, there are no armored fighting vehicles on the team. There are four main battle tanks and one artillery. Now, that's good because it means that, well, we're not going to have to worry too much about the AI artillery. The friendly artillery should deal with it. We've just weathered the initial rush of enemy tanks from the starting position, and now we've moved to engage the enemy tanks that are spawning from the north as they rush down into the second objective here in the fields. Plenty of targets to shoot at, we must be doing alright. Well, we think we are. <laughs> but we're not. A whole bunch of enemy vehicles, as you saw earlier, when the weasel spotted them, have already at this point spawned on the far western side of the map and they're already making their way by the bridge ahead up there down towards this secondary objective. You can see our artillery's put some counter battery artillery fire in at the enemy artillery, which is the only reason why none of us have been hammered by them so far. So please stay alive, artillery. <laughs> as long as you're up, we don't have to worry about artillery fire. Now, I'm not saying our artillery was a bad player. He, he certainly kept the enemy artillery off our backs, at least for the first half of this mission. But what he could have been doing 
between high explosive barrages was queuing up his illumination shells and dropping them on the far side of the bridge along that road, which you saw a whole bunch of enemy tanks appear on in the previous example when the weasel was spotting them. Now, if he had done that and had been able to light up the enemy tanks approaching from the west, well, I'm not in a position to really do anything about it, but the Leopard 2A5 is in a position to get flanking shots in them as they cross the bridge, and it certainly doesn't take four main battle tanks and artillery to deal with the couple of tanks that make it down here into the objective from the north. In fact, this is the last one. This is actually a little embarrassing. I, <laughs> I almost got stuck here, and oh, there we go, I just took a shot from the western side of the river. This is the first enemy tank that we see. Now pay attention to the mission timer. The second objective has less than 20 seconds remaining. All of those enemy tanks that spawned on the western side of the river are currently, like this light tank here, heading down to the current objective, which is where I am. But in just a couple of seconds, that objective is going to change. And it's going to change just as all of those enemy tanks, and right now we can only see one of them, the objective has just changed just as those tanks suddenly realize, oh, hang on a minute, now the objective's actually behind us, and now look at the position that we're in. Because they don't just spawn on the western side of the river, they continue spawning from the north. And now I've got tanks on my flank, which is going to make it absolutely suicide trying to cross that bridge. And we've lost our artillery. <laughs> He got taken out by counter-battery fire, which means I now have the full and undivided attention of the enemy artillery as well. So, we've got a whole bunch of tanks and many more spawning along the western side of the river. And they've now got a clear and uninterrupted run straight into the third cap circle. It's at this point where our Stingray 2 decides to make a hero run. And, well, I was going to say it's a little bit late. He should have been over the river five minutes ago. But it's not fair to blame the Stingray. Any one of us could have done what the Stingray is doing. And any one of us could have done it long before now. But he uses his engine boost. And while I'm getting hammered from two different sides and from above by the artillery, he makes it across and gets into the cap circle and round in the cover on the far side of the farmhouse up there. And I've actually made it over the bridge, but I've taken a fearsome beating doing it. And this is basically about as far forward as I can afford to get. We're never going to ever have anybody in a position where they can take good flanking fire into these tanks as they approach across the road when they're in the open. The other two main battle tanks are still on the other side of the road, but put yourself into their position. Right now, there's absolutely no real reason for them to move. The targets that they can see... They've got flanking fire into them, thanks to the idiot in the Ariete, <laughs> who went up to spot them with his face, and the Stingray, who's sitting there in the cap circle. So there's no incentive whatsoever for those two main battle tanks on the far side of the river to actually move their asses up here. And right now, I'm just digging in and holding on for dear life. I'm just trying to run that timer down and survive until the end of the mission. Now, we are going to successfully complete this mission, but we make a real mess of it. I mean, I, my tank gets wrecked. There's barely anything left. Just about every major system is damaged. Obviously, artillery is shooting at me. I'm the furthest one forward. I'm the only one that these guys can see. So I'm getting all of artillery's attention. Our own artillery is dead. They can't do anything about it. It's a win, but it's a messy win. There are far, far easier ways of doing it. This time around, I'm in the T-90. Now, the T-90 is a very, very good main battle tank. Also on the team is a very good artillery player in a Panzer Haubitzer 2000 and a not-so-good armoured fighting vehicle player. We've got a crab on the team. Now, the crab is a very, very good machine. Unfortunately, the guy driving this one was about as much use as an ashtray on a motorbike, and he spends this entire game hiding behind the tank destroyer. <laughs> so, <laughs> somebody's going to have to step up and scout for the team, and it's not going to be him. But the thing is, here on Operation Starry Night, it doesn't have to be the armoured fighting vehicle. If he doesn't want to earn a metric arse ton of spotting damage, then I am more than happy to step up and do it for him. First, however, you've got the initial rush of enemy vehicles moving into the second objective down there in the uh, fields. So, while I've got some targets to shoot at here, and I'm not going to spend too long doing it, because I am going to need to get moving. Uh, but while there are targets up, you know, it'd be rude not to shoot at them. So. Oh, he'll do. Yep, there we go. And he's cresting the ridge, and my gun's about ready to reload. Oh, I can just see his turret. Bingo. Got him. Right. Oh, I've, I've spent enough time here. I'm going to get across that river. Now, you don't have to cross by the bridge. 
In fact, it's already too late to cross fire the bridge. Enemy vehicles are already moving over it. Just that short length of time that I spent shooting up those tanks in the secondary, well not secondary, but in the second of the primary objectives, and it's already too late to cross fire the bridge. But you don't have to cross fire the bridge. Crossing the bridge renders you vulnerable to flanking fire from those vehicles that are spawning from the north and the vehicles that are spawning from just over to the left. Instead, you can cross fire the handy Ford that they've placed down here, almost as if exactly for that purpose. It's almost as if the map designers expected people <laughs> to want to get over the river without getting shot up. Once you're in this position, well, not exactly this position, I need to be a little bit further up the hill, but it's going to give me shots right down into the second objective. I'm actually able, from here, to still shoot up the tanks. Well, not from here. Come on, Jingles, a little bit further up the hill. Remember, you're in a T-90. The gun elevation isn't fantastic, but here we go. That's what we're talking about you can still assist with the second objective from the other side of the river. In fact, it's even better because I'm so far away that those guys have no idea who's shooting at them, so nobody's shooting back at me. Now check the mission timer. In 10 seconds, the objective is going to shift from those fields down across the other side of the river to right behind where that T90MS is. And so our artillery, because he's switched on and he knows what he's doing, is already shifting his fire. And I've got flanking shots into this guy, as he's still trying to head down to cross the river. And he's only just realised, oh actually, the objective has changed and it's behind me. So, if I hadn't been up here, that T-90 would now be blocking the bridge for the rest of the tanks as they try to cross over. But I was up here, and he's dead, and the rest of the team can get over the river. And I'm now in a position to spot these guys for everybody before they can get anywhere near that third objective. And if we can kill this guy... Whoa, 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 whoa hold on, hold on. That wasn't in the script. <laughs> it's alright. They're spotted. And so the team are taking them down. But ideally I want to get a little bit further forward so I can start spotting the enemy artillery as they start shooting as well. And with the uh, threat to my flank taken care of, that's exactly what I'm doing. Don't care about the tank behind me. There's only one of them. Uh, the rest of the t and there we go, bingo, spotted the artillery. Again, my lousy gun elevation fails me. Back up, turn around, nope. Doesn't matter, spotted him, team killed him. He's taken my tracks, yeah, don't really care, although the T90 MS behind him might be able to penetrate my flank from here, but the artillery is supporting me. My tracks are back up, I'm able to readjust the angle of the tank. Come on, reload, there we go, good stuff. Oh, check out the T90 MS there doing the drive-by. He's like, who's this tier 8 scrub in the T90 stealing all my thunder? <laughs> Another shot into the M1A2. Artillery working him over. And now, instead of me being the one having to face multiple enemy tanks from multiple different directions, they are the ones having to face multiple enemy tanks from multiple different directions. And then artillery fires a flare and tries to steal all my spots. <laughs> But there's only one of them, and there's no way we're going to lose this now. How much easier was this, by the way, than that mess that you saw me salvage a win out of in the Ariete from the previous replay? And there's no great trick to it. You just have to get somebody over the river early on, long before that third objective becomes active. Because at that point, it's going to be a real uphill struggle. And you don't have to be in an armoured fighting vehicle to do it, which is just as well because our armoured fighting vehicle is still on the other side of the river and he's still hiding behind our tank destroyer. How well do you think he did out of this match? Just have a look at all the spot and damage that I did in this game. Now I did a good amount of damage myself, over 15,000, but I actually did more spotting damage in that match. Imagine what a result that crab on our team could have had if he'd been the one up here instead of me. Not that I'm sorry, because I got a great result out of that match. Don't pay too much attention to the amount of credits that I earned. This is prior to the previous patch. Uh, you could double that, basically. And that's how much you could expect to earn um, with the current credit rewards for PvE. And there I am. And where's the crab? If he doesn't want to earn all the experience and credits, uh, <laughs> I am more than happy to do it for him. So, Operation Starry Night explained. I'm, I'm constantly seeing people complain that this map is unbalanced, the timing's wrong, the spawns are too hard. It's not. You're just doing it wrong. All you have to do is get somebody over the river earlier rather than later, and that's the secret, except now it isn't the secret. 
Hope you enjoyed the video, folks, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.